And now it's time for Power of Prophecy with your host, former professor at the University of Texas at Austin, career United States Air Force officer, and best-selling author, Tex Mars. Hello, friends. This is Jerry Barrett, the producer of Tex Mars' radio program, Power of Prophecy. This week, Tex was a guest on Jeff Rentz's radio show speaking about a tremendously important subject, censorship. As some of you already know, Tex's new book, Holy Serpent of the Jews, was banned by Amazon. This cowardly act was meant to keep people from knowing the truth about what the rabbis teach in their synagogues and what is written in their Talmud. Here is Tex Mars and Jeff Rentz speaking on the topic... Amazon bans Tex Mars's book, Holy Serpent of the Jews. Tex Mars is back tonight a week earlier than his normal monthly visit, and we have some very important issues to talk about. And those issues revolve around the First Amendment of the United States uh, Constitution. Oh, you there, Tex? Yes, I am, Jeff. Oh, okay, Glad to be good. With you. We're talking about the First Amendment here, ladies and gentlemen, and we're also talking about 1984, but beyond that, we're talking about censorship that is happening right now, right in this real world in real time. And it's getting to be very ugly, and it's getting to be something that we need to talk about. And Tex wanted to come on tonight, and I said, absolutely, uh, let's get into this, because people don't know, they're not going to find out about this on CNN or MSNBC, for God's sakes. Uh, it just, it'll be hushed up. So welcome back, friend, and tell us what's going on. What is happening right now is I have been banned... I've been banned by Amazon. Amazon, the world's largest book distributor, uh, sent us an email uh, this week and told us that my uh, one of my newest books, and, you know, I've written over, oh, I guess, 63 books, I think, now. Wow, that my congratulations, book, Tex. That's amazing. What an outcome. Well, I, I love to write. The, you know, I write the, the books that other people just don't want to touch. They're, they're afraid of these things yeah. for fear of... For fear of the Jews, frankly, my last uh, four or five books have been about the Jews in various aspects. And, and this is an, uh, an area of research that is very rarely done, and I guess I have found out why. <laughs> because, you know, now this book, you know, most of my books are bestsellers uh, at Amazon. Uh, and so, th th now, let me tell you the title, because right away people are going to go, ooh, that title. Well, the cover is very uh, fascinating, too, the whole cover. The title is uh, of this banned book. Now, now, think of it. Now, now they like banned. to brag. I have, a, I have quotes <laughs> from Amazon yeah. where they said they do not ban books. They don't believe in that. They believe in a free market of ideas. Let the ideas stand or fall on their own. That's oh. Uh, oh, please. Mr. Mr. Bezos, yeah. the, fifth, the fifth richest man in the world. He's got billions. That's yeah. what he claims. Yeah. Now, this book is entitled Holy Serpent of the Jews. I got and it in my right hand. That's right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the subtitle, as you can see, Jeff, is The Rabbi's Secret Plan for Satan to Crush Their Enemies and Vault the Jews to Global Dominion. Now, that's what I say a person who buys this book, uh -huh. and it's only $20, it's over 200 pages, if they buy this book, that's what I will reveal to them inside it. Now, This is one of the most me, important books you've ever done, by the way. I well, well you thank that. you very much. And I, I, really, I really worked hard on this one because I, I said to myself, you know, I've never had a book banned. Uh, I mean, a lot of bookstores have, a lot of book chains, a lot of radio shows wouldn't have me on because of my books. But but I've never been banned by Amazon because, you know, I, I tell the truth in these books. They, you can't deny it. And this book, I, I, I purposely designed it. I said to myself, Tex, this is going to be so incredible, so unbelievable, this expose of Judaism. I want to tell people what Judaism is really all about. And so I better go to the top rabbis in the world, dead and alive. Yeah. These are the most, some of the most famous rabbis in the world. Right. And I want to know what they're saying about their religion 
and their plans. This is so. So sure, I've got some commentary in the book, but mostly it's about the rabbi's secret plan for Satan to crush their enemies and vault the Jews to global dominion. Now, where did I get this information? I got it from Jewish books, of course, best-selling books. I got it from Jewish uh, online uh, programs by top Jews, such as at the Kabbalah Center, the uh, you know of Kabbalah uh-huh. in uh, the Los Angeles, California, by the same people who taught Madonna and Britney Spears and all these people. Right. Uh, but I went to the Jews rabbis themselves, and I said, what does the Kabbalah teach about Judaism. What what does the the uh, Babylonian Talmud, which is their most holy book, it's not the Old Testament. Now, their, their most holy book is the Talmud. What does it say about future events? What does it say about the, the Jews and their thinking about Gentiles? What are they planning to do to us if they win dominion? And they are planning to win dominion, by the way. They, they definitely got a plan, and, and they're working it very hard. So I said, well, I want to re- reveal that. Now, I've gone, you know, I'm 72 years old, Jeff. Let me just admit it. I'm 72. And, and for 50 years, I've been studying issues like this. Uh-huh. And I have gone to thousands of bookstores, I'm sure, across this country, Christian bookstores, uh-huh. because I've had three number one Christian best-selling books. So, you know, I'm not a slouch in the book department. No. Three best-selling no. books, number no. one best-selling books. Mm-hmm. And as I've gone in those, I've, I've gone over to the uh, religions, comparative religions sections. And, of course, mm-hmm. I've gone in uh, B. Dalton books when it was still there and uh, uh, all these other bookstores, uh, Barnes & Noble and such. And I, I've always looked for books on Judaism. I wanted to know what they said. And... None of them told the truth, and there's no Christian. I can talk to a thousand pastors and say, Pastor, it can be Baptist, Episcopal, it doesn't matter. Pastor, tell me what the Jews believe in Judaism. And he will usually say something like, oh, uh, they believe in the Old Testament. You know, we Christians have added the New Testament, but they believe in, you know, uh, God, the God of the Old Testament. I said, really? How about the the Talmud? Do they believe in that, too? And they go, hmm, I don't know anything about that, never heard of it. And it's interesting that the, the, the Talmud, the Jews say, over and over again, the top rabbis say, the most important book for us, actually it's a series, it, it's about, depending on the edition, it, it's you know 36 to 60 books. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, and, and these rabbis, they spend their entire lives studying the Talmud every day, day in and day out. And it's all these books, and they, and they, and they, they specialize in, in the Talmud. And the Talmud tells you everything you want to know about Jesus, by the way, what the Jews think about Jesus, what they think about Mary, what they believe are going to happen to the Gentiles, what happened to Jesus. Everything is, is in the Talmud. This is their guide for daily. In fact, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the Supreme Court Justice, she said, one book is my daily guide for living, the Babylonian Talmud. Really? Uh, Ginsburg, sure. our Supreme uh, yeah, Court Justice. What a book to live your life predicated upon. My God. No it, thanks. It, it, all of these people do. Herman oh, Wolf, you know, the guy no, who wrote no. The Winds of War. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. all those uh, the movies, uh, the, you know, came out, The Winds of War and such, with Robert Mitchum and so forth. Uh, he said, this is the lifeblood of the Judaism religion. So, you know, I wanted to know, what does the Talmud teach? What are they learning in synagogues? You know, I, I didn't want to see some stale old thing written by some guy who didn't even know. I wanted to know from the rabbis themselves, because this is what the Jews are getting. So I wrote this book, Holy Serpent of the Jews, because let me tell your audience right now, I discovered something incredible. I discovered that the basis of the Judaism religion is their worship of the serpent. They believe the serpent is holy. They believe that Adam and Eve did the right thing in eating of the fruit in the garden. Huh. It set it set man on a path to godhood, and they believe that they are going to be the ones to take advantage of that. They are being elevated to godhood, but only them, because all Gentiles are inferior 
like beasts. We're like insects to them, okay? Right. So they are divine beings on earth, and that's why they can kill the Palestinians without compunction. No they, compunction. They can do horrible, no. dreadful things without compunction. Well, they take the Col Nidre, too, and that gives them another ticket, doesn't it? That's right. The Col Nidre is in the, the Talmud, and it, it, it allows them once per year to take an oath in their synagogues. And the Jewish men do this. They, and they, they take this oath of the Col Nidre, and what the Col Nidre does, it, it says... Every oath you've taken this year, mm -hmm. or that you're going to take, that is, you don't mean it. <laughs> you, you can tell the Gentiles. You, you can you lie can go and lie and lie and lie, and you're excused in advance. <laughs> right. in, in advance. You know, there's all the contracts you go into with, with the Christian businessmen. You know, uh, you, don't, you, you can break those contracts. It's it's not only legal; it's godly to do that. Now, there's there's one very interesting. There's ever have many. For, for example, it talks about a rabbi who had sex with every prostitute on earth, and it says he was a most holy man. Uh, well, I, I don't see. think that's most holy. No. He, he, he went, and it, and it also says in the Talmud, for example, if you're going to have sex with another woman other than your wife, then go to another town. Not Don't do it in your own town. Go to another town where people cannot recognize you and won't know you. That and then it, you can freely do it with the other woman. That's right. That makes it okay. These are amazing. Yeah, oh, it does. What amazing Absolutely. people. What amazing people. Yeah. And, of course, if you have sex with a shiksa, that's a Gentile woman, that's really like having sex with a beast. That's really not intercourse. You haven't violated the law. On that. That's how they that's use okay. women. They use women like Kleenex. They just throw them away because they're, they're they just do. garbage. Yeah. Now, I have a lot of these, these uh, let's say, shibboleths or their laws inside Holy Serpent of the Jews. But the main thing that I do, I actually have a, a, a picture from a, an online Jewish site, one of the most well recognized Jewish sites in the world. And, and and by the way, they teach all of these things on site. You can go, you want to learn about Judaism, the real Judaism, you, you have to go to their websites. It's, it's, un, it's strange that most Gentiles don't do that. But if you do, you will find these kind of things. For example, I, I was, uh, I was, uh, uh, surfing, and there was a, uh, a website with a Jewish rabbi teaching, sitting at his desk. And as he sat there, Jeff, he rocked back and forth. Mm, mm, and he's making these strange sounds. <laughs> and he was speaking in Hebrew, and he was really yeah. going at it. Yeah. You know, he was really being very rhythmic. Was he and rocking like they do in front of the wailing wall? <laughs> That's right. That, oh, that, exactly no. like, you see these little black... Um, outfitted rabbis in front yeah, of the yeah, wailing yeah. wall, and there they're rocking back and forth, rocking well, there, back and forth. And ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to hear may be new to some of you, but it's the truth, and I hope you never forget it. We've all seen the Jews in their little hats and little black coats and their beards and so forth, and with the scripture open, and they're they're standing in front of the wailing wall, and they're and they're bowing, they're basically bowing their head and standing up straight. Bowing their head, standing up straight, over and over, very rapidly. All right? Tell them what's going on, Tex. Well, they're having mental sex. That's all you could really call it. Mental sex with the Jewish goddess. Now, this shocks people because they say, what? Yes, the man is literally having mental sex with the goddess. Now, most people say, well, I didn't know that the Jews worship a goddess. I thought they only had... You know, the, the the most high God, you know, Jehovah, I thought that's all they had. No, 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 no. You don't know the Talmud. You don't really know the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah has at least ten gods and goddesses. They got a pantheon of them. A bunch. They do, and they have two goddesses and two gods. Mm -hmm. So, if you know, if, if one doesn't give you what you want, you can go to another one. But there's there, there's <laughs> even, listen to this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell people right now, you may not believe this, but there is a penis god. And well, this penis god, that's uh -huh. right, there's a penis god, uh -huh. and he's constantly trying to have, he's pestering the princess. There's a lower uh, Jewish goddess uh -huh. named Malkuth, uh -huh. and there's a higher Jewish goddess named Bina. And he won't, you know, he'll have sex with one one time, sex with the other. Uh, and now, when a Jewish man has sex, well, let's say, let's give him a break, let's, let's say he has it with his wife. He 
imagines himself as having sex with the goddess, one of the goddesses, okay? Because he believes that he is generating with sexual power. He is literally recreating the world. Every time a Jewish man has sex, he imagines he is actually having sex with the goddess. And this goddess, Malkut particularly, recreates the world with her with her uh, generative <laughs> energy. Okay, it's a sex cult. It's the biggest, oh largest my. sex cult in the world. Absolutely. God. In fact, there's a, there's a, there's a, I found a video out, a very popular video, a new video, entitled... Uh, let's say it's entitled, um, oh, what is that? Oh, yes, uh, Sperm. Sperm, S-P-E-R-M. And a Jew is that, is that the, another god by any chance? <laughs> well, he does talk about the Kabbalah and so forth. But this Jewish guy, uh, he, he talks about, he, by the way, he did this video for his son. He says he wants to talk to his son about What sex. a great dad, great father. Yeah, okay. He, he is. He, and, he, and he says, you know, many Jews will, of course, benefit from this. And it's the official story of, of divine sex. He says the Jewish sperm is unique. It, it is it is divine. Only it is divine. And so, you know, it, there's all this stuff, it, just nonsense stuff that the, that the, the Jews believe in. People don't uh, know. And text what you've done in this book and what you've done in many other books is tell people the truth. This book is called Holy Serpent of the Jews. And I would ask all of our Jewish listeners to get the book as well and read it. And if you find fault with it, let Tex know. If you find fault in it, you're going to be actually questioning the actual statements and positions and preachings of some of the highest-ranking members of the Jewish religion. It's That's what the book is full of. That, that's right. It is uh, the, the most famous in the whole world. Uh, uh, I mean, from from Italy, from Israel, uh, all over the world, I quote these rabbis. And and by the way, on the front cover, there's a Jewish six pointed star, and there's a serpent. Uh, and the serpent, it seems, there's a, a infant coming out of the serpent's mouth. That's or going my in. Front cover. It looks like it's going in, but it's whatever. What's going on with that? Well, now that's true because I, I do mention it could be going in or out. But that's that's another story that I explain in the book. Uh, that that is the holy serpent of the Jews. They call it the sacred serpent or the holy serpent. Right. They say these rabbis say that the the serpent is their companion. It is their friend. Mm -hmm. The Talmud says on the Sabbath one can conjure up serpents to go and to destroy your enemies. Okay, so they literally believe in serpent worship, but they believe this serpent is actually, they use numerology, supposedly in the Kabbalah, to prove that the serpent is their, and I get this, Messiah. Now, they've rejected Jesus, but they have a Messiah. It is the serpent. Now, where does this serpent come from? We know it, you know, as, as in Genesis there, mm -hmm. Adam and Eve. We know that Jesus talks about the Jews right. uh, l literally believing in the serpent, and actually Jesus does say that. And I quote Jesus uh, in this book as well. You see, I, I thought it was just something that Jesus said, you know, hyperbole. He was just sort of denouncing them, but he was telling the truth. And he said, he told the Jews, you have for your God, not the God of the Old Testament, but you have... Uh, uh, a man-made God, and you have for your religion a, the, the tradition that is uh, of elders, he says, right. the, the old rabbis. That's what you have for your religion. He said, if you believed in Abraham, you would believe in me, but you don't believe in Abraham. And so they don't. They don't. Listen, the Jews kill all the prophets. And that's what Jesus said. You've all, you're the ones who killed your own prophets. Yeah. And I and I send you holy men. I send you prophets, and you kill them. So this is what Jesus said of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Now I, I I quote Jesus to pastors, and they look at me blankly, and they say, "I've never seen that in the Bible." And I said, "Well, here, let me show it to you." Well, I couldn't preach that. I mean, you know, man, uh, I defend my audience, and. Uh, <laughs> They're all a bunch of Zionist freaks. Yeah. They don't want to even tell people what Jesus says. No, nope. it's true. 
totally and Jeff, right. and Jeff, that's what I, I, you don't have to believe like I do, but but I do just simply. I'm just a, a simple Bible teacher, and I and I I go with the Bible. And, and, and these people, they, they, they don't appreciate the Bible. In fact, they say it's a waste of time, really, to read the Bible. The rabbis say, read instead the Talmud. That's where you have this spiritual power. Wow. So it, it's, it's an incredible holy serpent of the Jews. They worship the serpent, not a God. By the way, when we come back, I like to talk to people about the fact they do not pray to God. They do not. Jews don't believe you can pray to God. Everything Tex is telling you is is in the book, and then some. He's got so many wonderful books. They tell the they tell the truth. Talking with Tex Morris about his book, Holy Serpent of the Jews. Let's uh, let's buck this Amazon.com censorship and, and push this book up to the top. It, it really is a book that all of you who care about the world around us and how it operates should be familiar with. You've got to understand. Uh, your enemy. And I'm, by saying your enemy, I'm not saying that all Jewish Americans or all Jews are, are our enemy. But there are a lot of them that are in the business of subjugating you, bleeding you, and keeping you in utter financial bondage to them and their games. All right? You know who I'm talking about. It's a fact. If they were Hindus or Irishmen, I'd say the same thing. It just happens in this case that this is all being... Well, it all emanates from 0.37% of the world population. Think about it. Go ahead, Tex. Well, you know, Jeff, uh, Amazon probably has, I think I've about read somewhere, had 7 million books. 7 million books. Yeah, they're going to cancel this and put it on the <laughs> list. Huh? Matt's, Matt's the only religious one that I know of. Now, I'll tell you, uh, Jeff Bezos is the owner. Yeah. He's the fifth richest man in the world. Yeah. He also owns the uh, the newspaper that Donald Trump says is the enemy of the people. Yeah. Washington Post, the, the lying newspaper. Yeah. Uh, so you you can see he's he's trying to destroy Trump. But he, here's the thing on this book: they they sent me a simple email. They told me that my book did not meet their quote content guidelines. Well, I can't, I can't really find any content guidelines, but I know they've got books on torture, on incest. Oh, on rape, I mean, on murder, uh, you name it, they've got it, of course. Of course. Exactly. I mean, they've got the most horrible books in the world. Uh, and uh, you, know, you get a book on almost any subject you want, but you're not going to find the Holy Serpent of the Jews. No, well, that tells you the story. I mean, this book is uh, it's, it's too close to the truth. This is the game. That's what they do. Exactly. Now, I, I knew something was afoot because the World Jewish Congress uh, and uh, uh, also the Holocaust Museum in, uh, over in uh, Israel both complained about my book. Now, all they said was that Tex Mars is a notorious anti-Semite. And they uh. told them, uh, yeah, I'm a notorious anti-Semite, says the World Jewish Congress. Uh, and they said that, uh, you know, they asked Amazon to take my book off their list. Now, Amazon didn't. Here's the problem with it. Uh, you know, Amazon probably sells, oh, I guess, 80 or 90 percent of all the books in America. Uh -huh. uh, and when a person goes in and types in Holy Serpent of the Jews, they get no such book. There's no listing at all. They don't even tell you that they banned the book, that they, that they censored it. And I, I was thinking That's pretty about cowardly, this, Tex. Pretty it is, damn it cowardly. Is. Yeah. It is cowardly. They don't even tell people why. Why don't they tell people? I don't, you know, this book it, it tells untruths. It's because they know it's true, and they don't want people to know the truth. And this is the amazing thing to me. They are banning their own rabbis. Isn't that funny? But, but, but on the other hand, the Talmud says that if a rabbi reveals the religion of the Jews to Gentiles, mm -hmm. then he is worthy of death. Wow. Mm -hmm. Worthy of death. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I suppose it's pretty heavy on the rabbis. So, um, But they must hate a person who actually goes out and does research. But, you know, that's that's <laughs> what I do. Yeah. Now, yeah. I want you to turn to page 19, Jeff. Right. I actually have a picture there showing the ten main gods and goddesses, 
Now, you know, the Jews love to torment Christians and say, oh, you believe in three gods. You know, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Ha, 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 we just have one in Judaism. That is a lie. That is not true. Here is, are there ten gods? You can see them. And by the way, this picture, this, uh, um, you know, this serpent, mm-hmm. and there are ten gods and goddesses, mm-hmm. this came from the Jewish Kabbalah, the yeah. book of Zohar. So this is from the official teachings of, of the Kabbalah, which is a huge bestseller in all, well, it's in all the occult bookstores, all in all the Judaism bookstores. It's but, actually but becoming I, more popular, I think, Tex. It's, it's it, kind it of is. become now, the, the, the trendy this. book to read, yeah. It, it is. Think about this, Jeff. This is what where Madonna learned about Judaism from the Kabbalah. Mm-hmm. She she went to the Kabbalah Center. By the way, the head of that, Mr. Rabbi Leitman, I quote him, uh, he also praises the Holy Serpent. Uh, but I, I thought, so So this is what Britney Spears, Madonna, all, you know, all these women, now get this, uh, uh, who, 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 who sing and dance with snakes. You seen those pictures of oh, Britney? Oh, yeah, Britney Spears, sure, of course. Holding up the huge serpent. Yeah, yeah. You, you seen Madonna do the same thing. Yeah. That, that's why they're taught that the serpent is going to give them power, mm-hmm. great power, mm-hmm. to overcome their enemies. So now here is the serpent. This is this is from the, the Kabbalah. I, I didn't make it this drawing. I just took it direct, and it shows these ten uh, gods and goddesses. And notice that the, the one at the bottom is Malkuth. That's the 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 goddess who's the, like the princess. And and most uh, many of the men, I should say, at least many, not maybe most, have sex with her in their minds. She's the one they're doing their body contortions as they face the wailing wall. Uh, or, you know, maybe they're preaching in the synagogue. And right above her is a god called Yesod, Y-E-S-O-D. That is the penis god mm-hmm. that, that loves to have sex with this goddess mm-hmm. to generate the power that runs the world. In fact, that's how they created the world. They had sex together. Mm-hmm. Can, can you believe it? Now, Ma- Malkuth, it, Malkuth. Malkuth. Now, this, this actually comes from Milcom. Uh-huh. This is the ancient god. The, uh, Malkuth is the god uh, uh, known as Milcom. She was the great goddess of the ancients. The, the one that Solomon, he brought in the Asherah poles uh-huh. uh, and, and, and made God very angry by bringing these false religions. Uh, and, and this is she. Here she is. So they, still, they still worship her. Um, in Judaism, but this is the tree of life, supposedly for the Jews. You've heard of that saying. And yeah, it's interesting. I, I've actually seen Baptist pastors, and, and they and they were um, announcing they were going to be teaching on the tree of life. Uh-huh. And I thought, oh my goodness, surely they're not preaching on this. Well, they sort of, you know, take the serpent out, and they sort of make it, sort of sanitize it. Mm-hmm. But if you hear of the tree of life, this is the official tree of life of the Jews. And notice the serpent, he goes from bottom to the top. Now, I was reading, I was reading the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. Uh-huh. As you know, the Jews say, that's, that's, a, that's a forgery, that's not true. That book was, is made yeah, up. Yeah, I know, I know. It just happens to tell uh, the truth, but it's a forgery, uh-huh. okay. Now, there's a section in that, that nobody but the Jews would know. There's a section in there about the Holy Serpent. Hmm. And it says in the Protocols of Zion that our Holy Serpent, our Sacred Serpent, will go from nation to nation conquering until he has conquered the whole world for the Jews. And then, you know, in the Bible there's something that's symbolical that talks about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it says there will be a great supper, of uh, a banquet of the Lamb of God. So it's, it's like all the Christians are going to be there for this great supper, right? And so, you, you know, it's, it's a symbolic thing. I'm Tex Mars. You're listening to Power of Prophecy. We'll be right back after this brief message. Holy Serpent of the Jews. Please order this book. I want you to order as many copies as you can afford. It's not because I want to have a best-selling book. It has nothing to do with that. I don't write books 
because I've got some kind of algorithm or some kind of formula that tells me how many copies they're going to sell. I write them to help God do his mission on earth. Now, if I didn't do them, somebody else would. Some, he's, he's going to give somebody else a blessing. I want a blessing. So I write this book. That's why I write it. And in fact, while I was writing it, I got blessed. And when I chose the cover, you know what? I had some helpers that helped me choose this cover. I said, Boy, this is great. Let's go with this. I was blessed. Every page I, I, I wrote, I was blessed. And even when I was editing it, I was blessed. And by the time I finished this book, <laughs> you talk about a blessing. I had a great blessing. Not because I, I exposed the Jews and their false religion. The fact that Jesus said to the Jews, ye serpents, you generation of vipers. That's how, that's how Jesus talked to the Jews. That's what he accused them of. After I've studied it, I realized what, why he said what he did. I, I've always wondered about that, my friends. Why did Jesus call them serpents? Why did he call them vipers? Why did he say their religion was a man-made tradition? Did you get that, friends? He didn't say Judaism is of God, but there's just a few little things you need to change. He said your whole religion is of man-made traditions. And then he went on to tell us that they're, they're liars and blasphemers. And, and he called their, he called their synagogues the synagogue of Satan. Now think about that. Why would Jesus do that? Isn't he overly harsh? Isn't he overly critical? Isn't he judgmental? No, he tells the truth. That's when I, I, I cried out. I said, well, wait, wait, wait. God, you said they're serpents. Jesus, you said they're vipers. You said they're synagogue of Satan. Who is Satan? He's a serpent. They're of the serpent. I thought it was just a, a homily. I thought it was, he was just you know, using hyperbole. I thought he was just speaking words. Well, they are words. My friend, what comes out of your mouth is very powerful. Please understand this. When you speak on a spiritual subject, when a person says, for example, I don't believe in God, they're saying something powerful. It would be better that they not say that. And if you say things about God that are just sort of a, a compromise and halfway truth, God said it would be better for you to be all the way in or all the way out. Now, I'm paraphrasing, but because you're lukewarm, he's going to spit you out of his mouth. So so God, uh, Jesus was not lukewarm here. When he overthrew the, the money changer's temple, he wasn't lukewarm. Oh, that was mean of him. That was cruel. I mean, to overthrow their temples. Why didn't he just talk to them? Why didn't he just uh, compromise with them? Why didn't he make a deal with them? That's a big one now, you know, make a deal. Why didn't he compromise with them? Why didn't he, why didn't he have a contract with them? Say, you know, let's, let's all work together. Can't we just all get along? No, Jesus said, you're a bunch of serpents. You're a bunch of vipers. Your father is the devil. That's what Jesus said. And your synagogue is of Satan. Boy, are, are any of you in a, a church of Satan? Oh, no, no, that's. Anton LaVey, he, he founded that back in 1966. And I know about that church of, of Satan. And I read in the paper recently that they, they got the Baphomet statue of the goat God and put it out there. And, oh, I'm not into that stuff. Well, well listen to me just a minute. You, you could be. You could be in a church that says they're of Christ, Jesus. But Jesus says many in, in that great day that's coming, great day of judgment, will say, look at all the things I did in your name, Jesus. But he'll say, I never knew you. I never knew you. Don't you think there's going to be a, a great surprise? I, I mean, there's going to be a shriveling. There's going to be people that are just aghast. They're, they're going to be shocked and stunned to think that he never knew them. Now, the rabbis were evil, so evil that they crucified Jesus 2,000 years ago. We discover today, though, they're more evil than ever. They've had 2,000 more years to plot, to plan, to scheme, to con us, to manipulate the world, and they're doing it. They slanderously call Jesus a bastard, a sorcerer in their Talmud. Worse than that is their code of hell. They have a code of hell with its deranged Kabbalistic doctrines, and, and this book tears the veil off. There's a pious veneer of Judaism. They think that they are deceiving you. But Jesus says, you are like whited sepulchers. What is that? That's coffins. They used to paint the coffins white, the sepulchers, the containers of bodies, dead bodies. You paint them white, but inside they're dead bones and they're, they're full of corruption and uncleanness. 
That's what the Jewish religion is. It's unclean. It's corrupt. They profess Satan, the holy serpent, as their Messiah. They say he is, quote, they, now this is in the Kabbalah, quote, he's the fountainhead, the root, and the essence of God's revelatory light. We have journeyed to the center of the world, says Rabbi Box, and ended up in the belly of the serpent. Where are you, my friends, in this serpent? Are you in his belly too? They're obscene. They have an incredible destiny, but it's not a pleasant one. You'll never read another book like this one. I, I don't know what, whether they're going to kill me or maybe the, 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 the authorities will come and close down this ministry. I don't know because I, I, I say on the very back cover of this that I've, I'm exposing the most colossal devil religion ever. This is the most colossal devil religion ever. It portrays itself as something holy and good and pious, but inside it's the whited sepulchers. It's dead bones, bones of dead men, unclean, corruption. That's what Jesus said. You'll find horror and deceit in Judaism, and, and you'll be absolutely shocked. I was. You know, for years I tried to say, no, this can't be, this can't be so, this, no, 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 text, I, I, okay, so they're an evil religion, but they, they, certainly they don't actually worship the serpent himself. Many Jews don't even know they worship the serpent. They pray to Leviathan, oh. Dr. Israel Shahak wrote a book about Jewish history and religion. We offered that book through the ministry for many years. Who is Dr. Israel Shahak? He's professor at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Professor, a brilliant man. He wrote about the Jewish religion. He says, Gentiles do not understand that we are not monotheistic. We believe in more than one God. Now, he himself rejected Judaism because he, he knew what it was. But here he, he was one of the greatest scholars of all time, Israel Shahak. You can read about him. Look him up, up on Wikipedia if you'd like. In one particular book, he says, when Jews pray, we pray to one of many gods and goddesses. And when we have sex, we... Yoke ourselves with a certain goddess or God. We pray to her, the divine Shekinah, when we're having sex. And he said, if we don't get what we want from one God, we'll go to another God. And one day we will pray to Satan himself. And the next day we'll pray to some other deity. Now, did you hear what I just said? The Jews constantly pray to Satan himself. If they're not doing good in the business world, they might want to pray to Satan. Satan, help me. I want to be rich. Help me get rich. Yes, Satan. But the next day they're praying to another deity. If they want to have sex with some woman, they pray to that deity. It's just like the ancient Babylonians did, friends. This is where it comes from. Ancient Egypt, ancient Babylon. They believe in their Kabbalah that the number 666 is a holy number. It's a great number. It's a wonderful number. Rabbi Moses Hesod writes in the Kabbalah that the number 666 contains messianic potential. Oh, yes. That's the number of their Messiah. Who is their Messiah? Well, that would be Satan. They say Leviathan, the serpent, is their Messiah. But really, he acts as Messiah to bring them to fullness. Because the man who is a, of a conscious nature becomes God himself. And they say there will come a great day called the Day of Purification. Have you ever heard of that, my friends? To purify means to cleanse something. This is that great day when ethnic cleansing will overtake the whole world. Satan will be in charge and he will cleanse the whole world of the riffraff. That means you and me. The day of purification. Oh, many, many millions of people will be purged, will be purified. And the Jews will be exalted and they will have a great banquet. Now, you know about the banquet of the lamb, don't you? The banquet of the lamb, the book of Revelation. Oh, my, that's a mighty time when we're all called up yonder and we, we have this magnificent meal, the meal, the banquet of the lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Well, the Jews say we're going to have our own banquet and we're going to serve up meat, the meat of the serpent, Leviathan. We'll have a banquet and honor the fact that we're eating the serpent and we become the serpent. Oh, get that? When they eat the serpent, they will become the serpent. The occultists believe when they kill somebody, sacrifice him, his spirit goes into them. Remember when the man who, who shot John Lennon in New York City? They believed that his spirit was coming on them. That's why they shot him. Please, this book 
it's just twenty dollars. I'll order as many copies as you this book must get out to people. And I want it to get to Jews. Oh, they'll get mad at me, they'll be angry at me. But I explain where their destination is. Where your destiny is, you're you're going to hell. You have the most colossal devil religion ever. It's gonna take you straight to hell. You'll see for the first time, my friends, that the, the religion of Jesus Christ, the new covenant of Jesus Christ, totally refutes the covenant of the Jews, which, by the way, they don't even practice anyway. They don't believe in the old covenant. They don't do anything about it. Nothing. They have another religion, the religion of hell, of the serpent. They believe in the holy serpent of the Jews. They want a world religion, a world economy, a world government. And they want to lead it. But I first want to tell you how to get this book. I just got sort of overtaken there. Just just thinking about this whole subject. Just It actually makes me sad. It makes me so sad. But I'm afraid that millions of Christians are, have been seduced and drawn into this Judaic religion. And they are Judaizers. And Paul said in Galatians chapter 3 verse 1 that they, that they are into witchcraft. He says, who has bewitched you that you would step aside from your where you learned early in Jesus Christ and go back to Judaism. Friends, don't do that. Don't don't go into this Messianic Judaism stuff. It's evil. It's it's patently evil. And if you're in it right now, who has bewitched you? Twenty dollars at five dollars shipping and handling. Call us toll free one eight hundred two three four nine six seven three. One eight hundred two three four nine six seven three. Or write to us, Power of Prophecy or Text Mars. 1708 Patterson Road, Austin, Texas, 78733. You can also go to our website, powerofprophecy.com. Bingo is right in front of you. And just order using your PayPal or your charge card. $20 at $5 shipping and handling. It's the only book like it in the entire world. Now, let me tell you why there's not many books by rabbis like this. Because in the Talmud, it says that anyone, any Jew who teaches a Gentile of the Talmud is worthy of death. That's it. They're going to be killed. They're, they're, they're worthy of death just to teach you the meaning of the Talmud. You see, that's they're trying to keep it from everybody. I mean, what does Christianity teach about the New Testament? The whole Bible. Christianity says, go forth. Jesus says, and, and teach the whole world, teach every nation on earth about the gospel of the kingdom. Think about that. Go forth in all the world. That's in the gospel of Mark. Jesus said, go into the whole world and, and, and preach the kingdom of God. But the Jews say, don't teach the Gentiles about the Talmud. If you do, your penalty will be death. Oh, my. They want to keep it from you. They want to hide it from you. It is so hideous. It is so monstrous to think about it, about the holy serpent of the Jews. Who can worship the serpent? Who can make it their companion, their friend, their Messiah? Only the Jews, only the ones who crucified our Lord Jesus, who Paul said are contrary to all men. That's why they've been thrown out of country after country. Paul said they're contrary to all men. Let's return now to our program. But now the Jews, they must have liked that. That's in the book of Revelation. And they copied that. So they say, we're going to have a great banquet or feast mm -hmm. of the serpent. Ah, see, because Jesus is Messiah for Christians, but theirs is the serpent. And we're going to actually eat the serpent. We're going to serve the serpent. Now, in the occult world, in the occult world, mm -hmm. they believe if, if you sacrifice a, a human being or whatever, you, you must eat the flesh. I see. And, and that gives you great power, mm -hmm. you see. And so they believe that they're gaining the power of the serpent, and they're becoming uh, a divine beings by eating of the serpent. So it's a very sick kind of religion. But here is a serpent. Imagine here you are studying this religion. You're a Jew, and you learn all about the serpent and how he has gone. See, he's gone through all these gods and goddesses. And there he is at the top, Kether. The, the, the uppermost god is Kether, huh. meaning the crown. Uh -huh. This serpent, of course, is the crowned serpent. So this is what they believe, that, that the, the serpent is to be crowned. 
He is their Messiah. Now, it's interesting that not only did I discover this by seeing these kinds of pictures and their descriptions in these various Kabbalah books, uh, but I also read the works of one of the greatest uh, scholars of Israel history. His name is Israel Shahak. Yeah. I have one of his books, Shahak. Okay. All right. Now, he wrote a, a number of great books. He's, he, he died just a few years ago. He was a professor at Hebrew University. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he's an Israeli. And he talks all about, now, he, he's, he's, not, he's not a great fan of Judaism, but he describes it. He, he wants Christians, particularly, to know what Judaism really is. And he says, Jews lie all the time about our religion to, to Gentiles, but I'm going to tell you what it's all about. So here this Professor Shehawk, in his book, Jewish History, Jewish Religion, which I have a copy of, we offered it through the ministry for a while, Mm -hmm. he says that when Jews pray, they cannot use the name of God. And I have verified this. Jews do not pray to God because they don't believe in our God. They don't believe in the God of the Old Testament. Their God is named, they give him a name, Ein Sof. Ein Sof. It's the I, the all-seeing I. That's the, that's what Ein means. Mm. Mm-hmm. And Sof means to not know, to, to to not be able to figure out. This God, their great God, the Ein Sof, is inscrutable. He's ineffable. He's you cannot know him. And you know when the Jews write his name, they write G dash D. Yeah, I've seen they, that. They just, sure. Yeah. Yeah, because they say, you cannot say the name of God. Mm-hmm. His name is lost to us. But we call him Ein Sof, the unknowable eye of God. But but we cannot, we don't really know his name. It's lost, except to the greatest of rabbis. Uh-huh. Ah, uh-huh. well, you know, I wanted to know who these great rabbis were and <laughs> what, they, what they said. Now, they said you cannot talk to him. But what he has done, Ein Sof, here's what the Jews believe. They believe that in order for men to communicate with the deity, that Ein Sof created these divine sparks. In other words, he, he emitted from his own United States person these sparks of divinity. And right. these are these circles, and there's ten of them. Now, there's many more. Uh, and, and one of the gods of the, the Jewish pantheon is Satan. Because the Jews believe if they don't know God's name and they cannot pray to him, Mm-hmm. Some of them say, well, I'll pray to Satan. He'll give me what I want. And that's where Shah explains that many of the Jews do pray to Satan. Hmm. And they believe that Satan gives them things. Satan is not a creature like we think of him as. We think of him as literally the serpent. But they say, no, no, Satan is designed to be a friend of God's. And he's an errand boy for God. So we can pray to him and he can give us things also. So think about these Jews, a very devout religious Jewish Orthodox believer praying to Satan. And if he's not praying to Satan, maybe he's praying to Malkuth mm-hmm. or to Bina mm-hmm. or to Hokmah or one of these other gods and goddesses. Mm. So these are just incredible things. But what I wanted to do was show this holy serpent and where, where he's really taught. In the, and they believe that one day the serpent will make each Jew a god on earth. He, all, he will resurrect all the dead Jews. They're going to be crowded around here. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose so. And they will all be divine beings. Now, they will, they, he, the, the serpent will make them the conqueror of all of the, rab- of the uh, Gentiles. Uh-huh. Now, the Gentiles, they are inferior creatures. They're made only to serve the Jews. All of their property will be taken from them by the serpent or his powers on earth, you know, his agents, the Jews. And they will be given to the Jews. They will be very, very rich. And then they will be given a choice. Every Gentile will be given a choice. You can serve us. You can be our servant, our uh-huh. slaves, uh-huh. or you will die. We will behead you. And it's just like, the, you know, you yeah, talk about I heard the, that before. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's in the Bible. The Bible says they're going to behead us. Yeah. And it's interesting. This is what the Muslims, this is where they got theirs. They also are beheading people who won't believe, the infidels who refuse to believe in Allah. Will the Jews do so too? Now, the mm-hmm. Jews say in their their uh, uh, Talmud that, of course, they cannot fully institute it. Right. 
right now because they don't have the power. But when they get the power, that's when they... And this is what happened in the Soviet Union. Suddenly the Jews overthrew the Tsar, and, and Lenin and Trotsky and all the others were Jews. I think 19 of the first 22 in the Politburo were Jew, Jews. And that's when they said, now, now we have these Christians. Now we have them by the, you know what? And they began to, to slaughter and destroy them. Right. And there, there, is a, there is a letter from Lenin, and it goes out, to, literally a letter. It went out to all of the Jewish rabbis throughout Russia. And he said, are you pleased with what we're doing? We're closing down all the Christian churches. Now, this is interesting, too. Solzhenitsyn, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, the man who was called the conscience of the 20th century. Yes. He, he wrote the, the Gulag Archipelago, which sold, what, 50 million copies Something like of that, that book. Yeah. He says that 70 percent, a full 70 percent of all the commandants, of the concentration camps in Russia, that's the gulags, uh -huh. had commandants who were Jewish rabbis. Now, that's incredible. That's sick. There were, there were thousands of gulags. Yeah. And, 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 and he spent 10 years, Solzhenitsyn has spent 10 years in one of them. He should know. But he, but he says that Christians were treated far different. They were, they were tortured. They were hated uh, by the communists. But Jews were treated quite well, you know, Jewish criminals and such that were sent to these camps. Oh, sure. Because the Jews really ran the country. For example, Khrushchev, his real name is Nathan Perlmutter. So we have all of these Jews. And, and of course, this is, what, this is why they hate Putin. You know, Putin two years ago, in a public meeting of rabbis, uh -huh. explained that it was the, 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 the Jewish religion and the Jewish ideology that caused the murders of so many Christians. Right. And boy, I bet those Jews were sitting in their seats, you know, oh, they were smoking. angry at him. Yeah, sure. So these are the kinds of things that I write in my Holy Serpent of the Jews. Now, the, here's the whole thing, Jeff. Should they hide that they've banned my book? Shouldn't they tell it? I can't even go on. I went tonight and I looked for it all over the Internet. It's total cowardice, Tex, what they're doing. They're not even, they, they can't even be honorable enough to say, yeah, we're banning the book. They can't do it. That's this right. is what they do. I, I just, it's so, I get so tired of it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something, Jeff. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell your people the truth. I do not accept one penny in royalties on my books. Every profit, every, there is really not a profit on my books, but every cent we get for these books goes back into the ministry. And I write other books. That's what I do. Right. And that's why I've written so many books. Because I don't take this money, okay? Uh, I, I, it, it just automatically goes to the ministry. I don't accept any royalties. You know, when we were audited by the IRS, they were sort sure. of amazed about this. Yeah. But, you know, I don't think American people, and I, I know especially your audience and my audience, they don't like being told what they can read and what they cannot read. They say, I'll, I'll make up my mind for myself. Because the people that listen to rents or to Tex Mars radio programs, they're thinking people. Uh -huh. They want to know the truth. They're angry at this fake news stuff. And and so they're, they're going to be angry when they discover this book has been secretly banned by Amazon and cannot even be found on the Amazon's list out of millions of other books. Now, you know, I read recently where Ivanka Trump, mm -hmm. Nordstrom lied and said, oh, your, your clothing line is not safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's booming. And, yeah. And, and it... it backfired on them because people decided, listen, I'm not going to let you tell me what I can buy and what I can't buy. That's right. And recently came out that her clothing line is up 346%. So people went to, to online and they just bought the, her, her clothing. So, I mean, it's a big bestseller. Sure. But Nordstrom refuses, you know, because they're trying to ban her. They're trying to embarrass Trump. It's another, it's another slap in the, in the Trump family's face. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you know what happened to, to um, the, the coffee maker? I can't even remember the Starbucks. name. Starbucks. That's our, thank you, Starbucks. Yeah, they were going to hire 10,000 10, Muslims <laughs> to work in their shops, and guess what? People didn't like that. No, no, they didn't, so they just quit buying at Starbucks. They went somewhere else. And there's plenty of other coffee places. Yeah. And I don't, I don't go to Starbucks. I don't go to Nordstrom. 
You know, I, and I go where somewhere where they'll appreciate people like me. I said people say like so. me, people who voted for Trump. Yeah. But but I pray that people will order this book. And I promise them I will not accept one penny in royalties. So when they're buying this book, what they're doing is contributing to my ministry to go forward and to publish other books. And, and that's what I'm, what I'm going to do. I have a great one called The Destiny of the Jews. I'm, I'm working on it now. And it will be a truthful book because, you know, I, I, I've decided long ago that uh-huh. if I write a book that has anything in it that's not true, I'm going to be sued like crazy. I mean, these people are lining up to try to sue me. Oh, it's your, of probably, course, it's, it's common sense. It's your best possible protection. I, it's, and you wouldn't do anything else. You tell the truth. I mean, it's, it's anyway, go ahead. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, well, you know, I, I wrote about the New Age movement. I wrote Dark Secrets of the New Age, a landmark bestseller. Uh-huh. And that book, I told the truth. And that's what I do. And, and I, I love to hear from some people who say, you, even when I get a little typo or a misspelled word, people will write to me. You know, they, they help me. Do they? And they that's they nice. Keep me straight. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. I fix it the next edition. You know, that's what we do. We, we take care of the folks. But in any case, I pray that people will buy this, not for my sake. But I, th- I hope they'll buy it like they buy Ivanka Trump's. You know, now, what we line. want to do is force Bezos and Amazon to, to uh, get real, put this book back where it belongs, or at least put up a sign, a notice. We're not selling Tex Mars book, Holy Serpent of the Jews, because whatever. I don't care, but be honest. Stop being sleazy about it. It's just disgusting. Yeah, they they should tell me why. They can't say you're an anti-Semite. No, no, they got to no, explain why. No. Why am I an anti-Semite? I quote all these Jewish rabbis. All you're doing is uh, actually presenting the best of their whole alleged religion. Uh, these people are speaking the highest truths of uh, of Judaism. It's right there. It's all right there. It really is. Well, you're so, a marvelous uh, researcher, Tex, and you're working on another one now called "The Destiny of the Jews." Right, right. The Destiny of the Jews. Uh-huh. And uh, I'd like to I'd like to tell people my uh, website if I can. Well, it's of course, you click on <laughs> click on Texas name or go ahead and tell them. Well, it's powerofprophecy.com, powerofprophecy.com, or they can go to my name, Tex Mars, T E X E M A R R S dot com. Um, they'll see a description of this book. I even have if they'll go over to the archives. Uh-huh. There's a whole article on this book, and, and I talk also about the, the book being banned and, and such. But I pray that people will get it. And then, you know, I want people to judge for themselves. We have we have smart folks that listen to rents, and, and yes, I want them to get this oh, book. Yeah. And if, if they don't believe this book is true, they should write to me. But when they write to me, they need to tell me why they believe all these other rabbis are liars. Are liars, <laughs> of course. <laughs> You know, you know, you ought to offer a, a money back guarantee on the book just to be fun because nobody could ask for their money back on the basis of this being anything less than the truth. So in a way, they'd be beyond hypocritical and, and our listeners wouldn't do that. Anyway. Well, I'll tell you, I will, I will do that. I'll be glad to give anybody's money back. Anybody that's not satisfied with this book, write to me. Uh, and, and you don't have to even send me back the book, but uh, be honest about it, and, and, I'll, and I'll trust you. And uh, you can all Well, that's, book. that's amazing. It, 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 look, this book is one of a million. You won't find another one like it. Holy Serpent of the Jews by Tex Mars. And, and I'm amazed at your output, Tex. Amazed. Congratulations on this book. Uh, shame on Bezos and Amazon. I'm sure there are a lot of people there who, who don't like what he's doing. Uh, let's shame him by making this book as popular as it should be. Holy right, Serpent of the good. Jews. Yeah. All right, Tex. Thank you, and I'll uh, see you next Monday. All right? All right, and God bless you, Jeff. I'm Tex Mars. You've been listening to Power of Prophecy. My hope, dear friends, is you'll tune in each week during the same time and discover the power of prophecy.